Morning guys, thanks for clicking on the video. I've had the SRGT now for uh, just under six months and we have just passed the 600 mile mark. Now I know I'm not the biggest high goaler on this bike, but hopefully spring and summer in Scotland is coming so we'll get it out and we'll, we'll rack up those miles a little more. Anyway, 600 miles is first service and the first service is basically just a check over of everything and also an oil and filter change. Now, motorcycle dealers in Scotland are not very common and the nearest Apria dealer to me is quite a long way away and I'm not going to take it all the way there and then have to go back and collect it again just to get an oil and filter change and get charged a fortune for it. I'm going to do it myself. So we have bought the proper oil, we've bought the branded filter and I'm ready to go. So first of all, I'm going to show you the bits and pieces that I've got and, uh, and then we'll get started. Okay, so in the kit that I brought down to do all this, I have blue roll, very handy for cleaning things up. Measuring jug for measuring out the 1.3 litres of new oil that we're going to put in the bike. So a microphone, we don't need that. This is a 24mm uh, low profile socket. Now I got this because it's quite awkward to get to the... Um, the engine oil bolt, it's behind the exhaust pipe, so I thought this might come in handy. It might, it might not. It was only a fiver anyway, so we got that. Um, oil filter remover. I've never had a bike with an oil filter in it before, so I thought, again, these were very cheap, so I thought if I have trouble getting it out, this should do the job. Funnel. Another funnel. This is useful for putting oil into the bike at the end. Old plastic bottle to dispose of the waste oil. Bucket to capture the waste oil in that falls out the bike, hopefully. There we have new filter, branded Piaggio filter. Uh, what else? Another tray just in case I need another tray for the oil. This is, a, I think, a, a little um, fresh salad or something, no expense spared here. Um, a trusty celebrations tin, again I just brought a few of these things because I'm not sure what space I've got under the bike so this is always handy for capturing oil that comes out as well. Uh, a cloth, an inspection light just in case, more for the video than anything else. And then we have your oil and this is Plutoline Scooter 4 Stroke Plus Eco and the, it's 0W30 oil, this is what is recommended in the manual. So this is what we're putting in. It's recommended for the climate I live in, which is obviously a lot of the year a colder climate. So we've got two bottles of this. This cost about £35 for the two um, from a dealer. It's quite tricky to find, um, but I found somebody who was selling it and got a couple of bottles sent to me online. Um, you couldn't get it on Amazon. I don't know if you could get it on eBay. You probably could, but it's more expensive. So anyway, I found a, a motorcycle supplier that was selling this and got a couple of bottles of this. So that's your oil. And of course, finally, a socket set, which you're not going to get far without. Okay, so let's move on to uh, getting the job done. Okay, so you can see we're sitting at 611 miles, so just over the recommended 600 miles for the first oil and filter change. Normally, if you were doing this cold, you'd let the engine warm up for a couple of minutes before starting. Uh, I've already been out this morning for a quick run to the shops and back just locally. That was about half an hour ago, so I'm not going to bother warming the engine up. It's had a little tick over this morning. The oil should still be slightly warm. So um, now we're going to proceed with the whole operation. Right, so first thing we want to do is just reach in here and we want to remove the dipstick. Take this out. I'm going to take that out and keep that aside for the moment. Okay, so as you can see, it's quite fiddly to get in because you've got the exhaust pipe here, you've got the centre stand, so it's difficult to get a bucket directly under. So I'm going to have to use the filter up under this just to direct the oil in. The um, low profile spanner, uh, socket rather, was a good idea because I've just put that in and turned it and that's coming out fine. I did this a bit before just to loosen it, by the way, in case you think it's that easy. But anyway, it does fit in nicely here, just avoids hitting the exhaust. So the low profile um, socket is actually quite a good idea. You could use a spanner, of course, but it just gives you a bit more leverage here. So, we're now gonna very carefully Take this out, if I can get my fingers under here anyway. You can see it's really 
fiddly. Anyway, we're getting there. Great success of the oil going everywhere here, but anyway. It's coming out, which is what we want. This is why you bring the blue roll, because I always make a mess, no matter how much many precautions I take. Luckily, this uh, the floor in here is nothing fancy, so it's not going to be a problem. So, I don't know if you can see, but we're letting that drain out now. And in a minute, we shall mop up the mess I've made on the floor. Okay, so note to self is put something on the floor under this that's um, <laughs> oil resistant next time. Anyway, it's cleaned up, so that's okay. Uh, this is nearly finished emptying, as you can see, and here is the little filter we want to take out in here and what we want to look at for this is any little bits of metal or anything that may have come from the engine as it was breaking in and as you can see this is actually there's some little tiny spots but this is actually really good there's nothing on this that looks nasty or anything and that's what you want to see so we're going to give this a quick wipe and then we can look at um, taking the oil filter itself out Right, so we've given these a wipe and a clean, just make sure anything that shouldn't be on them is off. So they're ready to go back in. Here's our old oil, ready to be disposed of. So now what we have to do is we have to put the oil filter back in, put the, uh, take the oil filter out and put the new one back in. Next part of the job, let's see how that goes. Okay guys, so nothing is ever easy. Problem number one, this is no use for getting this off because there's just not the space to get these clamps around it. So this is probably more for a car or something, I don't know, but it's no use getting this oil filter off anyway. It's so tight under here in space. Um, and unfortunately, <laughs> the only other thing I've got is up at work just now. So I'm gonna have to pop up to work and collect that. Can't use the bike, obviously, because it's now got no oil in it. So these are all the sent things sent to try us. Anyway, we shall continue with this when I can loosen up the oil filter. Well, nothing's ever easy, is it? We've got the oil out. What I've done is I've put the drain bolt and the little uh, long filter back in again and tightened those up. A little bit of grease, a uh, little bit of oil rather, around the, uh, the O-ring on the, the bolt and put those back in again. So the oil is drained, so we're halfway there. Now I just have to find something to get this oil filter off and then get the new one back on. As I always say, you know, these videos are not slick and high presentation like some people do. I don't have a fancy garage with all the latest equipment. These are just to show what you can do or what you can, sometimes can't do very easily. Uh, on your own um, with basic tools and equipment. So anyway, I shall get back to you as soon as I get another tool which I can get this filter off with. All right guys, I'm continuing to battle to try and get this um, oil filter out. Um, the design of this filter is horrible. It's got kind of little indentations around the edge. I mean, this is obviously designed by Piaggio because they don't want people <laughs> taking it out themselves, they want them to go to garages where they have probably special parts and things. But it's a horrible design and totally unnecessary. Anyway, uh, first thing I tried this morning was a strap wrench. This is no good because there's just no room underneath the bike to get a purchase on it, so you, you can't use it at all. Um, I did nip to Halfords, they had an oil filter removal div um, um, what do we call it? strap, a metal strap on a metal bar. Um, I'll show you what I mean just now, but I can't get it moving with that either. 
So this is the Halfords tool for removing an oil filter. Now I had to shorten the straps because first of all, these metal straps were too long for a, a small bike filter. They were down, done for a car, just to show you what I mean. So I had to shorten these, put a drill a hole in and re-screw it back on again. Now the, um, the actual, this circumference bit here has little indentations which are supposed to grip the filter. This is a flat bit here which is supposed to, you know, obviously lie against one of the flat edges and you're supposed to turn it off, except it doesn't work at all. Um, you tighten it up with the, the big bolt at the bottom. Now, I've even put rubber inside this now. I've got rubber around the, the, uh, the filter and I've tightened this on as tight as I can possibly get it, but I don't think it's going to move it. Let's just try it. Oh, I think that is moving. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, hey. Well, <laughs> you literally saw that live because I've tried that two or three times and that didn't work at all. And finally, we've got the oil filter moving. Fantastic. Right, I'm going to get this off. I'm going to put a bucket under it in case there's any extra oil. So I've, I've honestly tried that two or three times this morning and I couldn't get it to move. So just the one time I decided to film it to show you it not moving, it's decided to move. Fantastic. Well, I'm delighted to say there we have off one oil filter. And you can see what I mean by the way it's designed. I mean, some of these I've seen, you know, non-standard replacement ones, even have a sort of bolt fitting on top that you can get onto. Now, I didn't buy one of those because I wanted to have it as absolutely the same as, you know, if a dealer had installed it properly, but that's a horrible design. Anyway, it's off. Let's give my hands a quick wipe here, because as usual, I'm covered in oil. So to show you what I mean, this is a Halfords, Bit more clearly this is the halfords um oil filter removal tool now the straps on this this metal bit were much longer because it's designed for a car filter which is much bigger and um, so i had to as you can see rather badly here <laughs> cut these straps off screw an extra hole in and pull them down so that you know when it was tightened it was a much smaller loop up here but that in itself and you can see there's little indentations in here to grip the filter but that in itself it wouldn't budget so what i did Let's just get a bit of rubber, which I had lying about, put that round the filter and then attach the, um, obviously the, the tighten up the strap with the rubber and the filter and just vary as tight as you possibly can. And that eventually moved it. So that did the job. Now I have actually got, because I was really struggling to get this done yesterday, I have got a part that was recommended by one of the guys on the Facebook page, which is supposed to be properly designed to remove these filters. That was about six pound on eBay. So I've got one coming today. Now, obviously I'm not gonna need it now, although I might try and use it to tighten up the, the filter a bit. But um, I'll show you that later, just in case that's a much easier way of doing it. Um, but anyway, filters off, happy days, we can proceed. So at last we're getting to the stage where we can almost put in our lovely new oil. Uh, I've got 800 milliliters ready to go. Uh, the capacity for the engine is th uh, 1300 milliliters, so obviously we'll need another 500 on top of that, um, but that'll start us off. Now this is our new filter, lovely, shiny and new. So what you want to do first of all is you want to put a little bit of oil around the ring here before you reattach it. Now there seems to be a debate as to whether you put oil in it or not. Some people say yes, some people say no. So I'm going to put a little bit in just to, you know, <laughs> hedge my bets. Um, it seems to be a bit of a, a mute point. But anyways, definitely oil round the ring here before we screw it back on. Well, I'm delighted to say the new one went in a lot easier than the old one came out. Uh, I've tightened it down using the strap wrench again. Now again, there seems to be conflicting views on how tight these should go. You don't hammer them in tight, that's for sure. Uh, some people are saying they should just be hand tight, but I think that's probably a bit loose. So I've tightened it down with the, the strap wrench idea and I think that should do the job okay. Um, obviously, I've no, there's no official service manual for this bike or anything that I've seen yet, so we don't have torque values or anything like that. Um, but anyway, we've tightened it down, it's tight, pretty tight and it's nice and snug and hopefully that'll do the job. Obviously, any oil that is leaking out will be easy to see. Um, but I think we're going to be okay with that. So we can now at last get to the point of putting in the new oil. Okay, so we're going to remove the dipstick. Take that out, lay that down. Make sure the funnel is spotlessly clean. Put that in there and then slowly we're going to add 
the oil. Just need to put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing here. And there's no hurry. Okay, so that is uh, 1,300 millilitres, 1 1.3 litres into the bike. Now, I was putting it in a bit too fast at the start and we spilt a little bit, so it might be slightly less than is needed, but that's fine because it's easier to top up than it is to, to take oil out, obviously. Um, you just have to do this very slowly. Uh, if you try and do it fast, it will overflow back out of the, the drain box. So you just have to take your time, do it very slowly, and it will fill up. So what we'll do now is we'll tidy up, we'll put the dipstick in, and we'll see what it's saying. Right, let's put the dipstick in and see what it's saying. And then again. Right, so I don't know if you can see that, but that is about it's actually pretty good. It's just, just slightly below the full level. But obviously, once the engine's gone round the bike, that'll drop slightly. So what we'll do is we'll run it tomorrow, check it again when I get off it at work, and just see what it's sitting at. But that's just, you know, a few millimetres below the full level, so that's not bad going. Happy with that. So I'm just going to let the bike run for a few minutes and then we'll check that level again. I'll let you know what it says. Hopefully that's us done. Okay guys, that's about it. Uh, I ran the engine for a few minutes, checked the dipstick and it was, it had gone, you know, to the other end of the dipstick basically, it was quite low. So I've kept topping up until I'm about halfway up the dipstick now and obviously I'll, I'll check it over the next couple of days just in case it drops down any more and add it up but there's no leaks or anything like that so job done not as easy as changing the oil on my old zoomer but hey that's what it's all about it's all about learning and that's uh, that's that done for a few more thousand miles um so thanks as always for watching guys i hope you've learned something interesting probably don't do it some of the ways i did it but we got there in the end thanks as always guys like and subscribe if you can and i shall see you on the next one all the best now